I'm kind of new to thinking this way, and I can feel everything feels right with what you're saying. Does it work physically, too? Yeah. I have chronic pain. Yeah. And when I live with pain all the time, how do I unthink the pain? Well, it is harder. Just like with our friend, it's harder to have an occupation where she's focused continually on something that we're encouraging her not to think about for a while. And so when something's hurting in your body, it's hard not to notice it. So look at it this way. You're going to like this. So let's say that your goal is to have a whole lot more money than you have. And your logic tells you that it's not just going to fall into your bank account today. But you could, in five or ten minutes of conversation, you could find the feeling or the essence of prosperity. So you could accomplish the feeling of prosperity, even though the reality, the manifested actualization of money hasn't come yet. Does that make sense? So you could have physical pain, which is the same thing as the absence of the money, and focus upon or find the feeling place of alignment and freedom from that pain. It's like calling pain the manifestation of something that you are changing the vibration of. We like that analogy. If you can feel rich when you don't have any money, you can feel pain free when you've got pain. It's the same process of thinking. It's just a little harder when it's so up. Money is tricky too because money or lack of it affects you all day long and pain affects you all day long and maybe not having something that you want affects you all day long but not as much so you have to use the power of your mind you have to be a little more disciplined you have to be a little more decided so we're going to tell you some things about pain that we think will help you a lot if you have resistance if you have a belief that is contradicting a desire you're going to feel negative emotion about it. And the more you want the desire and the more you don't believe it, the stronger that resistance is going to feel. So if you've got resistance, if you've got that negative emotion within you, which is simply the indication that you're not up to speed with who you really are. You're holding yourself back. Part of you is gone and the other part of you isn't going, which causes this tug of war, which is what the feeling of negative emotion is. If you've got negative emotion, and you don't recognize it and do something to soften it, it will get bigger. It will become more and more and more and more and more. And eventually, it becomes physical pain. Physical pain is just an extension of, it's an indication of resistance. But it's not very helpful to someone to say, well, your pain is because you've got resistance, get rid of it. Because if you could get rid of it, you would. But it is helpful to know that you can do something about it. And the thing that is most important for you to understand, oh, most people think that when they have physical pain, that there must be something really, really big and important that they are denying. And that is rarely the situation. What it is, is a whole bunch of things that you care about that you're just denying. And a lot of people are doing the same thing. You have so many beliefs that are contradicting so many desires. That's all that it is. Beliefs that contradict desires. And so now you've focused on that when it comes up and you're actually in the moment of doing it, you'll catch yourself doing it. And then maybe if you care about it, you can soften the thought just a little bit. Here's the other thing. Now that was not all that helpful <laughs> because what we just said to you is you're doing stuff and you don't know you're doing it and that's why you hurt. <laughs> so don't do that anymore. That was completely not helpful, <laughs> but it is the basis. It's important to understand that so in that way it has the potential of being helpful it's just not helpful yet but this will be helpful right away in the same way that we're talking to you about your open circuit relative to something that you want your body has trillions of cells that are consciousness that are open circuits and when the circuits in your body are open to each other and to the impulses that are coming from your central nervous system and from your thinking system. In other words, when your circuits are open, you thrive. Open circuits are what make you intend to pick up that glass of water and be able to do it. It's what makes your body respond to your thought. Those are open circuits, you see. And so even though 
you have more open circuits than not, all of you, you might be closing some of those circuits down through thoughts or beliefs that you have. So in the same way that we were demonstrating that if you have a desire and a belief that matches it, then the circuit is wide open and the universe can deliver to you. You can get back what you want. It's just an open circuit. But if you want something that you don't believe, then it's like electrocuting yourself and you don't get it back and it doesn't feel good. And the result is negative emotion. Stronger result than negative emotion is physical pain, which means pain always means this. The cells of your body are requesting things that are being offered that your resistant thought is keeping them from receiving. So pain means first and foremost helps on the way. It means the cells are asking because they know how to stay in balance. The cells of your body are so brilliant. They are such genius consciousness. Think about it. Do you ever think about your body? How incredible it is? You don't lie in bed at night and keep your own blood pumping. You don't make that a conscious thing that you do. There are so many things that you call unconscious, unconscious success in your body that the cells of your body are tending to. And the cells of your body are regenerating. They're becoming new over and over and over again. And so they don't hold old beliefs because they're becoming new again. But you teach them the beliefs that are hindering through your thoughts. In other words, when you think about getting older and therefore you're teaching the cells of your body things that cause resistance that don't let the circuits flow. So when your cells ask for something and the circuit is closed, that equals pain. That's all that it is. And you get a few trillion cells asking and not receiving, then the physical result to you is you don't feel so good. Did you hear us when we said it's not a big thing? You don't have some big, terrible, hairy, secret doubt within you. It's just a whole bunch of stuff. Like, I'd like to do that, but I can't. Something that simple. And just multiply that by a few dozen times a day, about a few hundred subjects, and then you've got resistance. That's all that it is. Is, is that why when I get really angry about something, it gets suddenly worse. I can move? No, I can move for when, a while. When you get angry, what happens when you really know what you don't want is you know what you do want. And so your belief or your desire has just been emphasized. This is really good because this is something that we said for the first time today and this is the follow through on it. So we are appreciating your observation because this is what it means. You know, earlier when we said to you that if you've got a very clear desire, it doesn't matter what you believe. So when something happens that really made you angry because you knew you really didn't want it, it made you know you really did want it. And for a moment, the energy really flowed in a powerful way. Yeah. The desire was dominant for a moment, as you said, for a moment. Yeah. So I don't want to stay angry all the time, though. No? Well, beats hurting. <laughs> <laughs> Clarifying is just going to keep coming to you. But don't overthink it. But pay attention to the way you feel. Haven't you noticed that all of you, we're asking all of you that, but you'll be able to answer this specifically too. But all of you think about this. Isn't one of the most uncomfortable moments that moment of indecision about anything? Should I do this or should I do that? That uncomfortable decision, it's kind of like you're just sort of paralyzed. And then isn't the opposite true when you've decided something? When you decide something, don't you then feel like getting into motion? Don't the ideas begin flowing? Doesn't the magic start happening once you've decided about something? And so the same thing is true about this. The helpful things that we've given you here. First of all, there's not anything big that's gone wrong. You don't have some big belief that is hindering you. You just have, like almost everybody else, a lot of hindering thoughts about things that do matter to you. And our friend who said earlier, I just decided not to care. I just accepted that I was probably not going to get called on. And there was such power in that because as soon as she accepted that she wasn't going to get called on. She let go of the struggle of that. And when she let go of the struggle, the resistance went away and the light around her, it was like suddenly she turned a beacon light on that took our attention right to her. When you decide that you're just not going to worry about the physical discomfort, you're just not going to worry about it. You're not going to 
exaggerate it. You're not going to try to explain it to anybody. You're just going to accept it. You're just not going to try to make a big thing about it. You're just going to accept it. You're just going to accept it. Just accept it without trying to change it, without wondering how it got there, without feeling like you did something wrong, without turning it into more. It just is and it's okay. Well, it just is and it's okay. That feeling of it's okay diffuses so much. One day, not too long ago, Esther was in a hotel like this and she was going through the kitchen back to her suite on the segment of refreshment. And she rides the service elevator because it's a more direct route up. She doesn't bump into so many of you. <laughs> so she got on the elevator with a man who belongs on the elevator because he works back there and he saw Esther and knew she didn't belong. And so he explained to her, there's another elevator for you. And Esther's looking at him. He was so sweet. And then his next words were, but you didn't know. <laughs> but you didn't know. And Esther just wanted to lick his face. She just wanted to wrap him up. She felt such tenderness and such understanding from him, not wanting to make her wrong. And she thought, oh, this is the most delicious moment that I think I've ever stood in where I'm doing something totally off limits and totally inappropriate. I could not be doing anything more wrong in this moment than being on the elevator with all the dirty clothes. But you didn't know, but you didn't know. And this is the way we want you to feel about anything that isn't going the way you want it. You didn't know that the cells of your body are communicating with each other. And you didn't know that you were blocking them with your negative thoughts. You didn't know. You just thought your negative thoughts were just negative thoughts. And you also thought that they were logical negative thoughts and that they were understood negative thoughts and that they were commonly thought negative thoughts. You didn't know. <laughs> But now you know, now you know. In other words, now you know, Esther explained to him, they gave me permission for this. And then she wanted to give back to him. She said, but you didn't know. <laughs> Just giving everybody the benefit of the benefit of the benefit. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Everything's all right. And the cells of your body know that everything's all right. And the cells of your body are not letting you down. They're asking for what they need. And in that softer vibration, see that? See that? You got that? You know what that is? You feel that? That's your confirmation. That's your inner being saying to you, you didn't know, but now you know. Did you feel that on your cheek just now? Yeah. You're not having a stroke. <laughs> Lots of things like that. That's you releasing enough resistance that you're allowing energy to flow where a moment ago you weren't allowing it to flow. You're going to begin feeling a lot of Twitters. Yeah. It's a good thing. It is a very good thing. Enough? Thank you. Yeah.